Since the election, we have created 2.4 million new jobs, including including 200,000 new jobs in manufacturing alone. After years and years of wage stagnation, we are finally seeing rising wages. That was President Trump delivering his inaugural State of the Union last night, focusing on jobs in America, pardon me, bringing manufacturing back home. He went as far as highlighting how companies want to be back in the United States. Joining us right now to weigh in is AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka. Richard, good to see you. Thanks. And you were a guest last night of the uh, House Minority Leader, Nancy Pelosi. So you were in the chamber. I was. I was there as well, actually. It was exciting to see your reaction. Well, you know, I, I really appreciated the president's optimism, uh, and I'm sure that uh, his friends, uh, that's the America that they live in. But uh, the, the people that I deal with, working people, aren't seeing that same America. They're not seeing their wages raised. They're seeing a lot of things, and his policies, quite frankly, are making it worse for them. And I'll give you an example. Uh, 150 workers get killed on the job every day or die from occupational injuries or, or disease. Uh, he, some of the regulations that he's done away with, doing away with the silica regulations, doing away with his budget proposes to slash worker health and safety training, doing away with the right of workers to go on inspections. That makes it worse for us. He did away with the overtime rule, so five million people won't get a raise. So the people that I deal with haven't quite seen the America that he painted last night. I hope they do, do you, and I hope we can get there. Do you feel like those people had it better under President Obama? Better under President yeah. Obama? I, I, I think, well, in some cases, because of the safety regulations, they have better safety regulations under Obama because he slashed these ones. He, he's done away with employers. But did the cutting of regulations records. lead to higher wages? Well, not necessarily. If it kills you, it doesn't matter what the wages are for someone else. Has anyone if died? Has home. anyone been killed? We lose 150 workers every single day. So you lost? On the job. You, you've lost workers then? Yeah, every day. 150 of them die in ones and twos that nobody knows about. And his policies, he slashed regulations. That was an applause line last night. I did away with regulations. Right. But some of the regulations he did away with hurts working The people. reason that I'm pushing back, Richard, is because I feel like cutting back regulations has been one of the key catalysts for improving economic growth. And when you have to have a job of building a bridge that takes 13 years instead of uh, one year that they built the uh, w- one of the leading buildings uh, in, in, in New York, obviously the Empire State Building, um, maybe it's not enough work. Maybe that's the, you, maybe you want to have 13 years to build a bridge. Maybe do the, no, uni- maybe I, the unions I, I, want the 13 years to build a bridge. Is I that think, it? I think we could come to terms and we could agree that some of the regulations and some of the red tape that stops us from getting jobs built need to be eliminated and changed and streamlined. I think we could get there. But, but saying to an employer, you don't no longer have to keep accurate injury employers, that you don't have to train your workers, that they can't go on safety stuff. Those are bad regulations. Doing away uh, with a regulation that says, I'm going to get overtime for 5 million people, he did away with that regulation. That hurt working people, 5 million of us. That wasn't good. Can we also talk about what he did do? Um, He signed the Tax and Jobs Cut Act, which... I assume your workers are seeing the benefit of we've seen AT&T, Apple, all of these countries talk about not just investment in the country, uh, which is going to be more manufacturing jobs, but also uh, each one of these companies, we've now into the hundreds, are offering bonuses that are putting money into their pockets. I would like you, I mean, is that something that you, you're finding your employees or or that the people you represent rather are Making more money. Making more money or or excited. Because I think that's something that, look, no matter who you are in America, what your policies are, if someone's put more money in your pocket, I assume you're pretty happy. Well, that's a good thing. Look, uh, our economy is 72% driven by consumer spending. So if you put more money in in workers' pockets, you're going to increase the economy. But here's one bad thing that happened in that bill. He has actually encouraged outsourcing of our jobs because now... If I create a subsidiary overseas, they pay no taxes, none. 
So it encourages them to create subsidiaries overseas. That's a bad thing in the But building. this is but, exactly and, the opposite of what he's talking about every day. But he he wants brought, companies to come here to America. Exactly. To, and he's but, trying to encourage But that's, them that's to the do problem, that. Maria. No, but it's not. Wait, 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 Sean. Okay, yep. That's the problem. What he says doesn't match with what he does a lot of times. And what he did in that tax policy was encourage people to outsource jobs. Okay, but what? It, but it's not what. It, let's talk about the practical reality. Apple talk. What is it? Three hundred fifty billion, billion dollars Over that they're putting years. here. All these other companies Exxon Mobil, because 50 of the, billion uh, be, yesterday because of the repatriation are actually Exxon Mobil. Is to, I mean, more and more companies are are doing exactly the opposite of what people said they were going to do. They're giving their employees bonuses. They're talking about reinvesting in America and building and hiring here in America. So the, the practical reality of what is happening is good for this country and is good for the American worker. We'll see. No, we're we'll, seeing. No, we, we we're will actually see. seeing. We, we are will seeing. See. The, the president tax mentioned bill, last the night Chrysler's bill. moving the jobs back to that's a good the United thing. States from Mexico. That's a good thing. And what, what was the reason for that? What was the reason? It's, it's his policies. He's trying right. to it encourage wasn't. companies. They, that was planned for a long time. No, it wasn't. Come on, Richard. All of, you're saying all of this is a coincidence? No. Three, uh, 200 no, plus no, companies, not. it's a no, coincidence? It was, no, was going to go. No, I'm not. Uh, the no, I'm economy not. was going to go to hell in a handbasket. What, I'm saying, what I'm saying is now it's Obama. he can't take credit for all of this, and his policies can't. And we haven't seen yet, Sean, what effect the tax policy will have on outsourcing? Because if I can send a job, I can build a factory in, in Mexico or Canada and pay zero taxes. That's here. why he wants to it's change NAFTA. It. But that's exactly why he well, wants to talk change about NAFTA. That. Let's talk, that's a let, good thing. Let me right. just say, be... under President Obama, he, the federal registry was up to 95,000 pages. There were so many rules and regulations that companies sat on cash. That's a fact. You've only seen companies recently, over the last year, start loosening the purse strings to start investing in their businesses and their people again because they're obviously looking at growth. Because of that rollback in regulation well I, again some of the rollback was good some of the rollbacks that affects workers health and safety that decreases our wages were bad and so you have to match that up and his policies don't always match what he says okay. do you think and what that we're trying to do is say look match them up let's talk about infrastructure for a second right he's talked about infrastructure for a long time and we can come to terms on it because that's good for us. I would think. You know, the, the Society of Civil Engineers say we need three and a half trillion dollars to correct bad infrastructure and create good this new It's a big opportunity. Right? He, had, he said last night he had a proposal for 1.5 trillion. In reality, the proposal that we've seen from him creates 200 billion over 10 years. 200 billion in federal money. Uh, well, wait a second. But then Hear you've got out. private partnerships Hear for the rest out. of it. Hear me out. Hear me out. 200 billion, that means 20 billion a year. Now, when you net that out with the, with the cuts that he had in his budget that did away with infrastructure, it's a net minus. And he proposed $25 billion to build a wall in, uh, in Mexico and only 20 billion for all of the infrastructure in the entire United States, all our roads, all our bridges, all of our airports, all our waterways, our grid system, 20 billion and 25 for the wall. That doesn't match up. I'm surprised. That does not match up. I'm surprised. I would have expected something else from the guy who's leading and protecting workers yourself, because this president has been all about the working man. What do you think a building wall is going to help my members? It's what? a big project to build the wall. No, he's talked about right. it. Right. But we're going to watch. We're going to watch the action. His policies haven't matched what he said. Richard Trump. Though.